So here we are, it's uh, October, feels like June actually in Michigan. This is kind of nice. Gl global warming is yeah, a great yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. At, least, at least it is to me. I don't want to make any political statements there, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of like this. It can be like this till, uh, till May and then it can get warm again, huh? Yeah. This is kind of nice. Yeah. October, October in the Catholic Church, certainly um, attention focused on the rosary, but it's also mm. in a particular way focused on the dignity of the human person, yes, isn't it? Yes, Respect Life Month, yes. Why? Why does the church care so much about life? Because every human being is created in the image, the likeness of God. Every human being is precious in the eyes of God. There's a sacredness to human life and therefore a dignity that every human being, no matter his condition, no matter the circumstances of his birth, every human being has an inherent dignity that comes from God. And, and every human being was washed clean by the blood of Jesus? Exactly. Right? And every human being is destined to partake of the divine nature. For glory. I mean, God loves them passionately. And I would always take, very often we think in groups, in masses, and God thinks in names, individuals. Mm. And that's, I see the beauty of the rosary is each Hail Mary, as you pray it, in, signifies for me one student, one family, one mother, one father. There is no such thing as a prayer for the anonymous masses. Mm. Yeah, God doesn't see crowds, huh? No. Mm. He sees individuals. Mm. And I see his blood upon yeah. each one of them and it, it inspires me to continue trying to be faithful in my own vocation and serving the dignity that God has you know, placed before me and it's a very delicate task to be able to, to love them yeah. in place of God. Mm -hmm. We've talked often about the line that um, later St. John Paul II, but when he was just the cardinal in Poland, mm -hmm. I think it's 1968, he writes a letter to a, a priest friend of his and, and he says, um, I think this is the quote, in his mind, um, the fundamental crisis of modernity mm. was the mm. degradation, and then he says, no, it's the pulverization mm. of the dignity mm. of the human person. So he'd, he'd come out of the horrors mm. of mm. Hitler and Nazism, mm. and then he'd, he'd endured was enduring at the time, the horrors of communism and the attack on the uniqueness and the dignity of the human person. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he became this uh, extraordinary champion uh, of the unborn and of this ongoing um, stress of every single human being from the very beginning until the end huh, is only to be treated with love and never as a mere means, right? Yes, yes indeed. So what, what, is the, what is the pulverization of the human person in our country? We get a lot of them, don't we? Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> but obviously I think we've lost it when we, when the Supreme Court did not recognize the right of a child in the mother's womb. When you cannot respect life at its beginning, you start to lose respect for life at all levels. Mm -hmm. We've even started losing the concept of who we are, um, where we come from male and female. Mm. And if we do not know at the beginning where our dignity comes from and who has made us and think that we have the right to have power over that, it leads down a very slippery slope. So Roe v. Wade makes a decision saying we, don't, we can't see when a child's viable. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it tries to make this a religious issue, but, mm -hmm. but, but abortion Abortion is not a religious issue, is it? No. It's, it's an issue of thinking. Mm -hmm. So we do know mm -hmm. when, we, we do know, not, not as a matter of faith, not because of the catechism, not because of Genesis or one of the Gospels. We know from uh, biology, from mm -hmm. basic human um, use of the intellect, that from the moment of conception, mm -hmm. you have a unique DNA, right? Mm -hmm. uh, everything that's necessary for mm -hmm. that organism to be to, to grow into maturity right yes, yes. And, and and then not only was Roe a travesty but then Casey versus Planned Parenthood acknowledges mm -hmm. we think we might have made a mistake with Roe mm -hmm. but if we were to reverse it now the credibility of the court would be called into question oh my Pride Trumps. Isn't that something? So we, <laughs> we, 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 we're willing to acknowledge we know now from mm. science, not from faith, from science, from the use of reason, 
that that's, that's a human being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how we can reverse that mm -hmm. and still look credible to people. Mm -hmm. What a tragedy. Oh, that is tragic, isn't it? And what, what's amazing to me is that this failure to recognize our fellow human as human and therefore with an inherent dignity is not a new challenge for us in the United States. Uh, it was a challenge during the days of slavery where African Americans were defined as less than human. It was certainly a challenge in Nazi Germany and we, we seem to have learned nothing from our history where people have been regarded as expendable or their lives not worth having around and therefore they get exterminated or they get enslaved. And now it pops up in how we gaze at the unborn child. And we all think, at least most of us, right? If I'd been living in Mississippi in 1863, mm -hmm. I would have been right there. I would have been mm -hmm. courageous. I would have been right. fighting for my yeah. black brothers and sisters. I mean, no question, I would have stood on the right side of history. If I'd been in Germany mm -hmm. and seeing my Jewish neighbor get arrested, I mean, I would have been out there. But I'm not sure that's, sure that's the case because that would have required remarkable that's courage. Right. Right. And, and we don't live in either Nazi Germany or in 1863 Mississippi, but we do live in 2016 United States of America mm -hmm. and children are being trampled on and we have the opportunity to do something. If I'd been living in Mississippi, I might have been tempted to think, well, this is the law of the land. It's always going to be this way. Yes. What could I do? Yes. But somebody mm -hmm. and some bodies mm -hmm. by perseverance, by mm -hmm. prayer, by willing mm -hmm. to sacrifice, by standing up for what they knew was right, overturned an unjust mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now it's our turn, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes, sir. So you're going to lead a group, aren't you, to Washington for the March I'm going to Washington. It's, it's beautiful to be able to say to the Lord, you've given me two legs and two arms and a heart, and I am just, I have to use them in order to defend my brothers and sisters and to be grateful for what I have, and above all for those who will never have the chance to be able to breathe the air I breathe and to hug a mother and a father as I do mine. If you've never been to the March for Life, can't encourage you enough to go. Here's this massive event. It's one of the most, it's, the it's one of the most largely attended events in the country. It gets mm. no coverage. Yeah. Nobody covers mm. it. Few people mm. gathered in Washington today to protest the, you know, uh, the anti-abortion movement. It's like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding. There's, there's millions of people who gather yeah. there, praying, yeah. peaceful, yeah. loving. I mean, there's no mm. contention. They're just standing up, right, for, yeah. for, the for, truth the, the, yeah, truth for those who have no voice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so if you've never had a chance to go, can't encourage you enough to find out a way to get there, either to tag along with us, Father's going to help lead some kids, we're going to bring another bus of adults. If you're in another parish, I'm sure you've got a, a bus that's going or something nearby that's going. Um, that's certainly one thing to do. What about, here, here we are, the year of mercy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's almost coming to a close. Undoubtedly, mm -hmm. many of us, mm -hmm. many of us, mm -hmm. <laughs> not you, have either been We've, we've been involved in one way or another mm. in the trauma that is abortion. We know certainly as confessors, oh, yes. the pain of yeah. men and women who come in. What would you say to maybe especially our sisters right now who are watching, who are afraid that God won't forgive? I'd say that the fountain of mercy that comes from the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ is open and eager to wash over you, to wash away the guilt, to heal the pain, to wash away the shame, and to give you that freedom, give you the life back that you think that you have lost. You can recover from this, all of my friends out there listening, because Jesus is the price that Jesus paid on the cross makes your recovery and my recovery possible. And we know that. Mm. You know, we, we know that ourselves mm. as confessees and we know it as confessors mm. that to, to watch somebody, a woman who's had an abortion, a man who's been complicit in it, walk into the confessional kind of burdened with shame, mm -hmm. um, mm. very fearful. Mm -hmm 
hesitating even, you know, oftentimes it's, is that it? Is that it? Is there something else you want to bring to the Lord? Mm -hmm. And then it comes out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I had an abortion. Mm -hmm. And it comes out. Mm -hmm. And then to hear the words of absolution Mm -hmm. and to know I've left this here. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I still have a scar, but I've been forgiven. I'm not guilty anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, Undoubtedly, some of us hear that and go, I would love to have that happen, but I don't don't know that that's possible for me. It's Mm -hmm. possible for you. And, And God wants to do it. The, the scriptures this month in October are filled with God's Mercy. reminders of how he loves to Amen. forgive. Amen. And, Amen. and Pope Francis instituted this year of mercy, especially for those of us who've been away from the sacrament of confession. Uh, and perhaps especially because of really serious sin that we just are afraid is, makes us untouchable. Yeah. Regardless of, of the facade that we have up, we're afraid... Mm-hmm. I can't mm-hmm. be forgiven. So make sure that you don't hear the church's defense of life as an attack on those mm-hmm. of us who've trampled on life because mm-hmm. we've all trampled on human dignity mm-hmm. countless times. Mm-hmm. Countless times. Mm-hmm. So it's not an accusation, it's a defense, and then it's an appeal to all of us yes. to just have our eyes open and to see one another the way God sees us. Come to His mercy. Yeah. Amen. So in this uh, Respect Life Month, let's ask Our Lady in uh, this month that's also dedicated to the Rosary just to continue to pray for us that our eyes might see one another Mm -hmm. as unique individuals whom our Heavenly Father loves so much that He sent His only begotten Son to suffer and to die and to rise so that we could share in His own life. Amen. Amen.